All right, hey everybody. Nice to have all of you here. Man, we already got a good group here. Stalin, welcome to the chat. Jeffrey, welcome to the chat. Uh, Vlad, welcome to the chat. Max, welcome to the chat. Joseph, welcome to the chat. Lord Funk, welcome to the chat. Got all sorts of people here tonight and even more that I've already seen. So welcome all, nice to have all of you here. So today, we're finally starting update 24. <laughs> I know we just finished, you know, update 23, uh, not that long ago, like what, six months late, but we're here now, ready to go and get into update 24. But right before we do that, let's go ahead and thank our most recent followers and subscribers since we last streamed. So yes, RY119, thank you so much for the follow over on Twitch. For those that don't know, we are streaming on Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube tonight. And yes, Snipe, thank you so much for the subscription. Really do appreciate it, buddy. Takes a little while to cycle through these, but it's going to go through in a second. Here we go. Anak, thank you so much for the follow. Really do appreciate it. Potin, welcome over on Twitch. Nice to have you here. And Ardent, thank you so much for the follow over on Twitch. Really do appreciate it. Okay, so we are here inside Scarhald from right when we left off. If you guys remember, there was this crazy uh, threat and uh, I guess you could say prophecy and ultimatum that uh, Karsgar made to the dwarves here and uh, seems like it might be pretty true. So we're gonna find out if that is the case and also we're gonna go ahead and start some quests. Lord Funk says also Dwarven Battle Axe signed by John Reese Davies? Oh man that is awesome! Very cool. New character frame for Roscabel Dailies, I assume that involves rabbits. Um, he was really nice. Met him twice on conventions. Very cool. Very, very cool. Alright, let's go ahead and get started with this introduction quest. The dwarves of the north will need your help if... That's not... I mean, maybe we have a dwarven narrator, but we need the real narrator here. The dwarves of the north will need your help if they are to survive the dangers that threaten them. Note that if you are interested in following the storyline of the Black Book of Mordor, Chapter 10 will bring you naturally to the Vales of Anduin. See, they're, they got better with those notes, because used to you'd have like no idea where you left off and all that stuff. Now they're like, hey, don't forget, there's the story to do first. Alright, let's talk to this dwarf and continue this story. When Karas got next attacks, we must be ready. I do not know what Karasgar plans for us, but I do know he will not give us the time we need to prepare for it. When the next of his promised attacks comes, we must be ready. But I have heard talk of these Zelruka, and I am troubled by it. They mourn for Brute's frost blood, and I do not chide them for that. But they let their grief slow their feet and stop their work. How can we be ready if they will not set the past behind and look to the dangers ahead? They must be reminded of who they are ending. Find the despondent dwarves here at Skarhald and tell them of the great deeds of their forefathers. Longbeard and Zelruka alike are dwarves. And as dwarves, they must fight for the- I mean, stand together against whatever evils Karasgar brings to bear. Alright, chapter one. Withstand and overcome. Here we go, time to find a bunch of despondent dwarves. And help them be less despondent, I suppose. Alright, yes. Inspiring with probably tales of Roscabel rabbits. You remind Zavo of the many heroes who sought the far Gothol over the years. Stalin says no rabbits, just goats all over Middle-earth. 
I won't spoil anything more. All right, good deal. Yeah, it's a brand new update. No, no spoilers, everybody. It just came out this week. Okay. Let's go over to this despondent dwarf over here. And inspire. You remind Lubbock of the Zaruka's role in the great mending of Yarnfast. Good deal, good deal. Are we just going to each of the corners of this courtyard? Yes, we are. All right. Inspiring everyone all around. You remind Maverick of Boto's Frostblood's courage, even the face of certain death. Oh, dang. And welcome to all 13 of you across the different platforms. Nice to have all of you here. Inspiring one more dwarf. <laughs> you remind Domos of the glory and riches that surely await him in the Arid Mithrin. What? Wasn't the whole moral of the last update to stay away from all that stuff? Alright, yeah, remember the riches, the, the reason you came here. Good times. Everything's not horrible. It will take more than words to cure these ills. It will take action. What's that? The Zauruka paid little heed to your stories. Ah, and then, the memory of battle is still too fresh in their minds. It will take more than words to cure these ills. It will take action. Return to the lower level and see if the bodies of the dead, dragon kind, might be set aflame. I also ask that you pick up some of the weapons dropped by the slain. The sight of those fallen weapons will harm the morale of the dwarves. See if you can find Boto's axe, Troll Splitter, where it fell. I should like to wield it in his name. Go now, my friend. We must do what we can, and quickly, or the dwarves here at Skarhald will dwell so long on the first promise that they will not be ready for the second. Oh, dang. So now we want to speak with Inik, uh, the Brash, on your way to the lower level. Nick calls for your attention as you approach. Did Durin ask you to retrieve Botus's axe? Hmm? And then, I saw you speaking to the dwarves of Skarald, spinning tales and stories of heroes gone and deeds done. It had as much effect as I expected. Now you are going to take action. Good. Good. Did Durin ask you to retrieve Boto's axe? Throw splitter, you say? <sighs> I will not stop you, but I ask this of you. Bring it to me rather than to the son of the Longbeard King. Boto's frostblood was of the Zauruka, and his axe should be wielded by one of his people and no other. Durin names it Troll Splitter, but if he were the right successor to Botos, he would speak the dwarf name and does not. I tell you the axe's true name is Velik Kolung, and I name it such. Do as Durin asks of you, but bring Velik Kolung to me before you return to him. Going to need fishing to be on a high level or you won't be able to finish certain quests? Oh man. It's currently a bug. Okay. Oh geez, they do have dragon bodies all over here. Alright, let's burn them. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did we just do? I think we lost like all of our hair on our face there. 
Like some, we, we have fireproof beards. That's, that's the real improvement here in Lotro. Fireproof beard technology. Sponsored by Gandalf. <laughs> it's like the dragon goes supernova, like, oh my gosh. Fallen sword, here we go. Goats, the goat lords of Gothen. King of the goats. And of course, Smog the golden. <laughs> the goat who sees the long haystack. <laughs> oh man. Alright. See, fallen swords abound. No axes, though, mind you. Just swords. Just swords. Hardly dwarven to me. But no, I guess, you know, the Zelruka do use swords more than axes, which is interesting. Because when you think of Tolkienian, Tolkienian dwarves, you think of, you know, axes and beards and longer beards. And that's about it. <laughs> we know how the drakes died. Drowned in petrol. Right? Like, there had to have been somebody putting lighter fluid on those. Like, good grief. Burn the drakes of dust in less than a second, right? How we survived, I don't know. Uh, oh, collect troll spitter. Spitter? Yeah. <laughs> this thing just spits out trolls. It's it's a crazy axe. Alright. So we, we got supernova drakes and axes that spit out trolls. This, this is Lotro. Update 24, everybody. Ah, here we go. See, I thought that was just another sword that we didn't need, but no, it was the axe. Okay. Let's actually, before we do that, it's an important axe, so let's you know, get a good little little screenshot here. There we go. Collected Troll Splitter, prized weapon of the Zelruka. Good deal, good deal. And uh, we are playing on the 64-bit client, for those of you wondering. So far, so good. Knock on wood. Alright. One of the things it did, though, is it turned back on, like, glow or whatever. Whatever that annoying, sometimes annoying effect is, because it glitches out in Lotro quite a bit. It makes things load weirdly in the game. Like, if you look over there, it's like, it causes, like, flickering, which I don't like. Man, that's a cool, cool goat. You have, like, your own head protection outside. It's just the, the goat's horns are just protecting you. It's like crazy. You're like in a roll cage. That's cool. I will wield this axe in memory of Bortus. Thank you for bringing Velik Cologne to me, and then I will wield it in the memory of Botos, and let all foes of the Zaruka fear its sharp edge, and mine. I know Doran thinks we should reinforce the defenses of Skarhald, but what good will that avail us if Karazgar returns? You saw the army of Dragonkind at his command. No. We need to take him by surprise. I have commanded Horin to assemble a band of strong warriors for the purpose of pursuing Karazgar and putting an end to him once and for all. You are welcome to join the hunting party if you desire glory and honor. It is to the Anvil of Winter Steeth that Horan will go, there to face the Weeping Warrior and avenge the Fallen. He will welcome you among his warriors, if you wish to join the raid. But first you should report to Doran, of course. He had some small task for you to undertake, did he not? 
Max says the 64-bit client is twice as good as the 32-bit client. Yep. Although if you ask like a programmer, they'll tell you it's way better than that. But uh, yes, because I think there's multiplication involved in there somewhere. You have returned, but where is the axe of Botu's frost blood? I thought you were going to bring it to me. Of, I thought you were going to bring to me the axe of Botu's frost blood. You tell Durin that Inik laid claim to the axe, insisting that it was a Zelruka weapon and property belonged with him. Durin sighs and nods. Yes, of course. <laughs> I, I understand. It is just that... Uh, can I ask you to hold this in confidence, Andeng? You know the emblem of the Ironfold, surely. It consists of a black mattock and a red axe crossed on a grey field. Well, that is not mere heraldry. My Uncle Nine carries the Black Mattock, into battle every chance he gets. And my grandfather Dine wielded the Red Axe at many important battles, including his last. With the Red Axe he defended the body of King Brand before the gates of the Lonely Mountain. My father is now king, but he does not have my grandfather's temper for battle. He will not carry the Red Axe into battle. I thought I might be the one to wield it, but I gave up any right to wield it when I ignored my father's command, to return to the Lonely Mountain, and instead followed the Zeruka into the Grey Mountains. I know that Troll Spitter... I know that Troll Splitter is no replacement for the Red Axe, but I thought a weapon of some tradition might make me feel more ready to lead. Alas, it was not meant to be. I will not let it bother me. Thank you for listening, Andeng. Brand of... Brand? Band of Preparation. Mind, Vitality, Critical Defense, and Tactical Mitigation. Alright, good deal. Man, we are really... Like, that's... What, a 50% increase? That's crazy. We got critical defense. Alright, Horin has the assembled a raiding band to hunt for Karasgar. <laughs> Apparently, this is client based and not UI based. That's interesting that your bags are saved that way. Huh. Things you learn when you change out your clients. <clears throat> The goat from the anvil raid, okay. Very cool. Now, on to other matters. At Inik's command, Horan has assembled a raiding band to hunt for Karizgar at the Anvil of Winter Steeth. I will not attempt to stop you, for I know you are a champion of great skill, and do not fear such a challenge. But not everyone is as capable as you. I have learned that Votro, the West Wind, the scout that ran afoul of Karasgar not so long ago, desires to accompany Horin's band on this raid. Horin refused to account of his injury, but the rumor has it that Votro plans to follow them in secret. His leg is injured, and at best he will slow down the group. At worst, he will endanger not only himself, but the entire band. Convince him not to follow them to the Anvil and Deng. I know he wants vengeance on Karazgar. So do we all. But with this injury, he will be more he will be more hindrance than help. He is to the southwest of here, down two levels, among the tents of the Zelruga. Where were all these level descriptors in the previous quests? Like, all of a sudden, they're telling us exactly where everybody is. I'm glad, but I just wish we had it previously.
Alright, I think this qualifies as like advanced cave jumping. Alright, oh man, there we go. That's down two levels, right? I'm not quite. That whole thing is just one level, okay. For such short people, they do big bid. They do big. They do build big walls. All right. Of course, I guess when you're trying to keep out dragons, you need quite quite high high walls because you know they can they can fly. Anyway, let's continue on. That's cool. I know it was there before, but. Like, I just love that they don't do anything with the bone, they just leave them there. Like, yeah, we killed all that stuff. That goes from the anniversary. Use a bar of tokens to mithril. Okay. I think we passed him. I think we went down one too many levels. We've gone a bridge too far. Surely not too, too many levels. Oh man, we did go down too, too many. We we just got all excited about going down downstairs. We were like Treebeard. I love going downhill. Oh yeah, this guy. I know why you are here. And I will save you the effort of telling me not to follow Horan's band to the anvil. I know what the others are saying. They think my injury will make me a burden. To them, I say this. Karesgar did this to me. I was a scout, the sweetest Zelruka in all these mountains. And with one slice of his cruel blades, he robbed me of my greatest ability. For that I desire vengeance. I will stay behind when the others go to the anvil in pursuit of Karesgar and Deng. But I will want you to promise me something. If Horin's band is not able to slay Karesgar, if the weeping warrior manages to outsmart them at the Anvil of Winter Stith, I want you to help me achieve my vengeance. So I will stay here and rest my injured leg, but my thirst for vengeance will not sleep. Jeez. Intense dwarf there. Alright. Good deal. Um, where do we need to go to now? Talk to Durin once again. Didn't he say just check in with this guy and then we can move on? He lied to us. At least I feel like he lied to us. Maybe not. But we must go to find out. Where you go with a little lamp was the best. Yeah, that was a very cold coat. All right. Ah, look at that. Got fast travel there. Good deal. If you wish to join Horan's raiding party, now is the time. Thank you, Andeng. I know how difficult it is to sit out a battle, for it has happened to me. I know this too. Vutro has made the right decision. Once his leg has healed, he will once again be the swiftest scout in the Grey Mountains. I do not doubt. If you wish to join Horan's raiding party, now is the time, my friend. I will await your return from the Anvil of Winter Stith, and may it be in victory. If you wish to participate in the raid, this is when the Anvil of Winter Stith raid takes place during the story. If you do not wish to complete the Anvil raid, you will be told what happened there when Horn's band returns to Skarhald. We need to ensure Skarhald is ready if Karasgar does return. Well, I guess we're just gonna hear what happened. <laughs> it was horrible, Handang. You weren't there and we failed because you didn't show up. If you had been there, everything would have worked out. 
But no, Mr. Important Streaming doesn't have time to get a group. I just assume that's what the quest is going to be like. All right. There are some things we need to do to ensure that Skarhald is ready if Karazgar makes good on his promise to return and then. I will see to the repair of our siege defenses and the replacement of the arrows and bolts we need against further attack from the air. But I have something else in mind for you, my friend. You helped me assess the supplies inside the keep before Karazgar's attack. But I noticed more than just the inventory of armor and weapons held within. Do you know what else I saw? The upper levels of the keep were inaccessible, for the stairs had been damaged long ago by the passage of time. Who knows what those rooms and chambers might hold? I asked Kamat and Kozon to find a ladder, so they might search the near, the rear of Thrarazar, the keep here at Skarhold. Go to them inside the keep, and lend them what aid you can. Kozan's gift is pants. Thank you, Kozan. Kozan's cozy pants. It's as cozy as a dwarven beard. Okay. Ah, oh, they added a ladder. Look at that. How nice. How nice. You know what? We're going to take a screenshot of that. It's a special. We now got the ladder. It's all good. Oh, man. Kamat waves to you and calls you over. Whoa. Crawling invaders. We must fight for the death. Man, this place is filled with crawling invaders. Beware, beware. You were sent here by the Longbeard Prince. Very well. Very well. But I will not be responsible for your safety if something were to befall you in these chambers. The vacant rooms of the keep do not seem to hold much danger. But Kozon and I found a tunnel in one of the walls, and strange sounds echo up from the depths. If you do find foes within the keep, or that threatening tunnel. Do what you can to best them. Whatever lies within will be no friend of any of us. Whether we be Longbeard or Zaruka or something else entirely. That dwarf sprung a trap for you off with his head. <laughs> if only it were a bit higher off the ground. Oh, man. That's great. Defeated foes behind or within Tharazar. One out of eight. Two, two out of eight. Three, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna do it every time. All right, <laughs> let's continue along here. Take on all this stuff. Whoa, that's cool. I like this place. Mirror, mirror on the wall. That 
that story would be so different with dwarves. Who has the fairest beard of them all? The dwarves that help out Snow White. Dathaney, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Alright. Loot all that. And continue up the stairs. Whoa. That's pretty cool. I like exploring old dwarven keeps. Kinda wish there was more than just, you know, these crawlers here. We all know it's during this fair sphere. Yeah, that's true. That kinda negates it, doesn't it? By Dern's beard. Just ignore that for a second. So we can get some good screenshots. That looks pretty cool. Alright, let's fight. Good deal, good deal. Find the entrance to the tunnel in the back of Tharazar. I'm guessing it's over there. Strange sounds echo up from the depths of the winding tunnel. This is about to get really psychedelic, I feel like. This place is cool. Which way do we go? Whatever way we want. And that is really cool stuff. I guess we're not fighting anything because, well, there's someone else in here. By the sound of it. Around the hole. This is already cooler than the Paths of the Dead. It's crazy that there's a hidden secret way into the Dwarven Fortress. Who knows what we're gonna find in here. Not good stuff is my guess. Not good stuff at all. How long does this go? Jeez. Well, now we're below where we were, I think. Huh. Well, I'm thoroughly lost. Don't ask me which way is the proper way to go. Um, we're going back up. Turns out it's all a big circle, and it was just a big mistake. Cave leads nowhere. You found the bottom of the tunnel, where it empties into a sloping path north, west of Skarald. I think this is the bottom of the tunnel. This is up. Just saying, game, you got it wrong. All right, let's talk, goes on. I think this tunnel served as an escape tunnel for the dwarves of Skarhold. Kamat sent you. He did not wish to follow me down here, but I do not begrudge him that. His is the path of learning and of books, whereas mine is that of the banner, the hammer, and the axe. Goes on peers through the cave mouth. Kamat may know more about this than I do, but I think this tunnel served as an escape tunnel for the dwarves of Skarhald. See how it exists among the mountains. 
I do not know whether ancient dwarves ever made use of it for this purpose. But it does not take much learning to see that an escaped tunnel might cut both ways. Dwarves could use it to escape, through, but Karazgar could use it to invade, were he ever to find the entrance. We should collapse this cave mouth ending. Here, lend me a hand with this, and by that I mean do it yourself. The cave mouth has been successfully sealed by rocks. Ta-da! All right. What do you have to say for yourself? Let us hope we do not <laughs> Very wish good. With the cave mouth collapsed, we need come. not worry. Everything's all jolly good now. Make your way back to wherever you were. No mithril option even. That surprises me. It's just too new of an update. They haven't worked out where the mithril takes you. It'd be... I was going to say it'd be really funny if like mithril just didn't work on dwarves. They just, they just keep the mithril. They never take you where you need to go. Just like mine. Alright. That's a dead end. Time to go back out of the cave. Back on up to the upper levels. We haven't been this way. At least I'm assuming there's a mob. Or maybe they're respawning because that one guy. Or girl came through here early. The player. Oh man, stuns. Stuns are real. There we go. Yeah. Make our way on up and out of here. Tunnel claws. Surprised they didn't come up with some new enemy yet. Just the same ones over and over again. Bad. No one liked you anyway. <laughs> All right. Hey, we're back in the throne room, just like that. And it probably would have been faster just to pour it out of here. And let's see if we can avoid fighting. Just get out. So what are what's those ways? I guess we did go that way, didn't we? It's been a while. There's just an Oathbreaker over there, just randomly. <laughs> Hello, Oathbreaker. So with that glow effect, the water like shimmers in the night. That's pretty cool. And welcome to the extra people coming in now. We now have 21 people across YouTube, Mixer, and Twitch. Welcome one and all. Nice to have you all here. Alright, uh, we went too far. Oh, I guess he can be inside there or out here. Alright. Mount up. Loot all that. Gandalf has come to Skarhald with a small party of dwarves. 
Look who it is! Are you acquainted with Gandalf the Wizard? Yes, but I know him by a different name now. Uh, da da da. Mind to vitality, agility, will. Gandalf has come to Scarhold with a small band of longbeards. Who's this Gandalf guy? It's Mithran, dear. Didn't you go to Gondor? Gandalf has come to Skarhald with a small band of long beards from the Lonely Mountain. Even Hroistir has come. He is the personal guard of my father the king, and it is most unusual to see him so far from the royal seat. Why have they come here, you ask? Because they are bad at their jobs, and they told me of two purposes that brought them hither. First, to stand with us against the dangers of Ered Mithrin, no matter how fearsome. And second, to deliver this. Durin brandishes the weapon in his hand, and his voice is heavy with emotion. This is the Red Axe, passed down from ancient days, and wielded by my grandsire, Dain Ironfoot in many battles. When I came here against my father's command, I thought it would never be mine to wield. But Royster says it is not so, and he relayed to me my father's words. Durin, I am told he said, when you disobeyed my command on the edge of the Dale Lands, I was moved to anger and spoke words I am ashamed to remember. My counselors told me there was honor in your actions, but I did not see it. Durin, the message continued, when I consider the history of the long beards, I see that no one can choose the times that will test him. I sought to shield you from a dangerous world, my son. But that was a father's ambition, and not the way of a king. Wield this red axe on behalf of our people, and when you return to the Lonely Mountain, on this other side of many victories, all shall know you are fit to be king under the mountain after me. Go, my son, the red axe is yours. My heart swells to hear my father's confidence and thing. I will wield the red axe on behalf of both my own people and the Zeruka. Yes, I am here. Good for you, Gan. Good for you, Gandalf. Glad you're here. I have made some progress deciphering further pages in the Black Book, and I wish to share my discoveries with you. I deem it wise to request a number of strong warriors to accompany me, and while King Thorin at first refused, in time he came around to my position. He needed a reminder of his people's history and of the great deeds his forebearers accomplished when their resolve was tested. You ask Gandalf if it was the wizard's idea that the Red Axe be sent to Durin. I am sure I do not know where you might have gotten that idea, Andang. King Thorin is welcome to do as he likes. I merely suggested a number of the a beneficial outcomes that might be reached by such a course. And if the king under the mountain agreed with my proposals, certainly he demonstrated wisdom befitting a king. But that is behind us, Anding, and we should turn to more pressing matters. What is this I have heard about an expedition to the Anvil of Winterstith? And we're already on. Ch we just completed chapter nine point four. We are cruising through this story. A raiding party of dwarves sought to oppose Karisgard at the Anvil. 
The anvil of Wintersteth has long been both blessing and curse to the dwarves that seek their fortune in Arid Mithrin. It is it was a blessing for the years it remained sealed, trapping many dangers behind its frozen surface. And that was the case for most of its history. I say it was a curse for the pe periods when it thawed due to global warming, setting loose those evils upon the mountains. And when you lighted those dragons soaked in gasoline, that was a huge mistake. Global warming like crazy. Alright, so clearly doesn't say that, but it'd be funny if it did. Still can't believe those supernova dragon explosions of fire. Graspy, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. I understand that a raiding party of dwarves recently sought to oppose the efforts of Karasgar, the weeping warrior, at the Anvils of Wintersteth. Will you find some of these dwarves and hear the report? I wish to know what befell them at the Anvil, for it concerns us now most directly. It seems one of these dwarves Mudro is recovering from the ordeals northeast of here, on the upper level of Scarhound. Speak to him and ask what happened to his raiding party ending. Durn has given to me a chamber in the northeast corner for my use while I stay at Scarhound. I will meet you there after you have learned what befell the dwarves at Winter Stith. Man, you got a w room real quick there, Gandalf. Be careful. That kind of service probably doesn't come cheap. Of course, we, we are in ruins here. Alright, let's go talk to this guy. Hey, buddy. You wish to hear about Hurin's expedition to the Anvil? Uh, the memory is painful. You wish to hear about Hurin's expedition to the Anvil and thing. Would that you had asked someone else. The memory of it is painful, for though we achieved some successes, many good friends gave their lives at that cursed place, and will not return. Twenty-four of us there were, armed with our finest weapons and our strongest armor. Our scouts spied Vaithun Wintermind flying north above the withered heath, making for the anvil of Wintersteath, and we knew Karasgar drove him hither. The drakes and worms of the Frost Horde seemed to sense some terrible presence behind the frozen surface. Did Karasgar seek to claim this power for himself? As we approached the great crack in the anvil, Vaithung flew overhead, stirring the frozen winds into madness all about us. Karasgar taunted us, but the long beard, Zauruka, and Stoutax alike laughed at him. Your empty words do not frighten us, we shouted at him. But it is not Karasgar we should have attended at that moment ending. For as Vaithung drew near to the crack in the anvil, mighty drakes of the Frost Horde sensed the presence of their kin. They flew from the rent in the ice in terrible number, seeking to put an end to their foes of old. Little did they care for our lineage, or for the different families arrayed before them. No, they saw dwarves beckoned in plate and leather, dwarves wielding blade and axe, and that was enough. The fight was fierce, and by the end of the melee, the ice was speckled.
with blood. That of Drake and Dwarf alike. But only the warriors of our band remained alive. We were not yet triumphant. Before we could so much as catch our breath, a great worm crawled from the crack in the ice. Is Vita, the gluttonous she was called, ancient and hungry. And even as we shouted our war cries, she thanked us for bringing her dinner so near. But she had not accounted for the sharpness of our dinner knives, or for our own appetite for battle. With the door warden Isviva slain, the way into the anvil was no longer barred. Karasgar took advantage and steered Vaithung Wintermind into the gap. We had no choice but to follow. I am fatigued, friend. Perhaps Dolik will continue the story of our expedition for you. He is to the southwest, on the upper level of Skarhal. Grassby says, I just hit 120 last week and came to the new Veil Zone. My gear is so bad I can barely handle one mob with my hunter. Oh, man. That's rough, but glad that you are here. All right. <laughs> Back to sound. Um, got six people on Twitch. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching over there. Twelve on YouTube. Nice to have you here. Nobody on Mixer, but... That doesn't surprise me. Just got two followers on there. And uh, not really a platform I'm focusing on too much. So anyway, let's talk to Dolik. Yes, I fought with Horin at the Anvil of Winter's Teeth. We stood among the corpses of Frost Drakes and saw Izvitha, the gluttonous, breathe her last. Together with my fellows, I strode past the jagged ice and into the great cavern within the anvil itself, following the path taken by Karasgar and Vaithon Wintermind. The frozen cavern was not empty, though it did not contain our play. Frostbound hobgoblins and whelps of the frost horde stood against us, terrible foes. But of a sort, I was unafraid to face. As the last of them fell, I brandished my axe and prepared for whatever evil dared show itself, knowing that I and my fellows were ready to defy it. I did not know. I did not know what awaited us. Dolok looks at you with sadness in his eyes. His shoulders slumping at the memory of the frozen cavern. He grips his axe more tightly and resolves to finish his story. We moved forward into the smooth surface of a long frozen lake. And that is when we saw them. They were arrayed on a ledge above us, ghostly figures of kings long dead. I swear I recognized some of their number, though many had been dead for hundreds of years or more. Aye, these were kings who vanished seeking the citadel. But instead of finding lost Thafor Gathol, they perished in unforgiving north. For many of them, Winterstith proved their undoing. And yet there they stood. And I beheld them with my own eyes. Nay, it was not so. Dragon magic lay heavily upon that cavern, moving illusions against us. It chills my heart to remember that desperate fight. But still we pressed on, leaving the unpleasant sight of our fallen kings behind us. Into the frozen maze we stepped, thinking the worst lay behind us. We were wrong. Ibor will tell you more. He is 
to the northwest. All right, my goodness. That is crazy. My throat's getting tired talking about all these dwarves here. Their long beards. How much have the others told you of our expedition? I understand you seek to hear of Horin's expedition to the Anvil. How much have the others told you? Because remember, I haven't heard anything. It's a miracle that last guy just picked up right where you left off. Anyway, the illusions of the dead kings, you say. I am glad I need not speak of them, and then. That was cursed dragon magic, I tell you, and unnatural. In the Frost Maze, we at last encountered our prey, Karazgar, still astride Vaithong Wintermind. We engaged in battle, and this time no strange illusions could stay our assault. With all our strength, we leapt at the Drake, seeking to carve the record of our battle into his hide. It seemed beyond hope at first. But slowly, the battle began to turn in our favor, and give me your power. Give me your power, Karizgar, the Drake cried, or we will both perish. But the weeping warrior bears no love for anyone but himself. As the Drake at last succumbed to his injuries, with his final breath, Vaithung cursed Karazgar. His words echoed against ice and stone, chasing Karazgar deeper into the tunnels of the anvil. If I close my eyes, I swear to you, I can still hear his terrible voice. Mother, he cried, avenge me. Should we have turned back? No dwarf of our company then wished to retreat. But now it is easy for those of us who made it back to Scarhall to say we should have. But instead we followed Karazgar. And so it was that we beheld his confrontation with Hirmil Frostheart, brood mother of the Frost Horde and Herald of Winter. I bore smirks. I've got to go, Andang. Safe travels. Thanks for the entertainment. Hey, thank you so much, Joseph, for joining. Really do appreciate it. I say confrontation, but it was a one sided affair. Hrimil seized him in her jaws and flung him around like a child's toy. She fell upon us then, and that is when there many of our company perished. She leapt into the air and landed upon us with such force that the very ground beneath us crumbled. We fell a long way. Those of us that survived ran for our lives along the lower tunnel, while Hirmil pursued us. As we tumbled down the final slope to safety, Rimmel sent one fringed blast after us, and the crack in the anvil was sealed. She had trapped herself within, and let us thank whatever power caused her to do it, or she might have followed us all the way back to Skarald. Twenty-four of us went into the anvil that day and then, but only fourteen dwarves survived. At least Karazgar and Vaithung died, and will no longer trouble us. That at least is a happy result. And Horan's expedition must be deemed a success, despite the lives it cost us. So I guess that's the end of that story. 
Jeez. They have certainly seen better days. My goodness. Alright, where... Tell me where is Gandalf, for I much desire to speak with him. Oh, he's inside here. Chamber of study, how fitting for you wit. This is the worst chamber in all the new areas, I feel like. Not a great little spot. I think the dwarves are wrong. I believe Karizgar still lives. What did you learn of the expedition to the Anvil Landing? You relay what Mudro, Dolok, and Arbor told you about the events at Winter's Death, and Gandalf listens to the account with interest. When you have finished, he strokes his beard deep in thought. It may have been merely good fortune that caused the Herald of Winter to seal herself once more within the glacier ending. But I see another power at work. At any rate, the dwarves of the Arad Mithrin have proven fortunate for once. <laughs> they need not worry about him, Il Frostheart, on this day, although a day may come when they might. I do not believe Karasgar was truly slain, however. It may be that the Herald of Winter has given the weeping warrior his field of battle for now. But I have not heard whispers from the dwarves of this place that a trail of blood and rust. But I have heard <laughs> a trail of blood and rust led away from Hermir's chamber, and I am certain Karasgar lives. But let us turn to that matter but let us turn to that matter that brought me hither. I wish to speak with you concerning the Black Book of Mordor. I have spent much of this time studying the Here Black we Book, go. seeking to learn its secrets. And I am no nearer to learning how this book came to be hidden in the secret chamber located in Kiel's home in Yarnfast. But that is not to say my study has been fruitless. No, there is much to be learned from this tome, and I have made some progress already. Listen well to my words, and I will share some of the knowledge it has imparted to me. Listen well to my words. Much that it is in those pages remains unknown to me, but if you listen well to my words, you will hear what I have learned. Allow my words to paint a picture for you, my friend. A picture from long ago. Where are we? What? Are there windows just into the cave? Oh, we're about to learn some serious stuff. Stefan, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Stefan says, well met ending my admirations to your dedication to bringing Lotro's stories alive with your voice and weaving in clever remarks. Belon the Wise, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Loving this book so far. Yeah, it's pretty good. Alright, let's continue, Gandalf. Much of the writing within the Black Book of Mordor remains a mystery to me, as I already let you know, Andang. But I know enough of ancient Dwarvish to make a beginning. Wait, hold the phone. This Black Book of Mordor is written... In ancient Dwarvish? What is up with this book? 
The tome was written by a dwarf named Vowen, the thrice great grandfather of Kiel Tailspinner. Like Kiel himself, Vowen was one of the Zaruka. He kept a home in Yarnfast more than a thousand years ago. But the black book you found within the hidden chamber there is all that remains of his life. Vowen himself appears in no other record that I have found. The writing of dwarves, or at least that of the long beards I have known, is generally straightforward and to the point. Not so that of the Zaruka. Indeed, while I have not had occasion to study many works of the dwarves of the East, Rowan's writing in the Black Book seems more convoluted, convoluted than others of his kind. He writes in multiple languages, using many different runic alphabets. Furthermore, some of those scrawlings are clearly written using a cipher, or I am not a wizard. But I am a wizard, therefore there are curious gaps between some of these lines, and on some of these pages. Kill's cryptic ancestor may have written some of this account with hidden letters and ang. But unless we learn the trickery, that will remain invisible to us. That is a pity. But I warrant the visible writing will keep us busy enough. He writes often of that lost city of Thafar Gathol. It seems to have been a preoccupation of his. These are the halls of memory, Andeng, deep within your mind. No, I'm just kidding. I would name them Thamas Rinid. To a dwarf such as Vowen, they would be Zoldum or Islic Dum. But these are not physical halls. The Hall of Memory are given shape by the words of Vowen. What? So this is a mind palace? The columns rise from his dreams as a dwarf, the walls from the bounds of his experience. But there are gaps in my knowledge. The halls of memory remain incomplete. Walls of fog, dense mist, these hinder our pursuit of knowledge. Only the words of Bowen can banish these impediments. I waited for as long as I could. In the end, it was not very long at all. Oh, there's a dwarf. <laughs> I waited for as long as I could. In the end, it was not very long at all. It was a cold land, a hard land. Evil dwelt there. The fog dissipates, revealing further avenues of knowledge. Proceed, Andeng. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't have enough cash for Andeng's patrons to get him to voice NPCs as I adventure in Lotro. How trippy is this? Gandalf flips through the tome, seeking the right pages. This is really cool, right? Right, I guess we're just gonna travel through while he tells the story. How cool is that? This is one of the coolest quests in Lotro. Hey Gandalf! He teleported. Alright. Whoa. Whoa. Mordor. Why'd you have to bring me here, Gandalf? 
I didn't want to come. All right, let's go. Vowen writes of Mordor. Dwarves are dwarves. My voices are apparently not that far apart. Anyway. Vowen writes of Mordor in many different pages of his tome, but I cannot tell if he speaks of one journey or several. The writing on these pages is confused, and many of the detail are obscured. I cannot say when he adventured there, or for what purpose. I believe when he reached the end of the book, he continued to write on the overleaf pages. Seemingly at random, no doubt. This makes a true accounting of the chronology difficult. And yet there are some conclusions to be made. This black-bound tome bears the marks of Sauron, and that is not a symbol commonly found beyond the borders of his land. Bowen went to Mordor, and when he emerged from that land, he brought with him the Black Book. I cannot say for certain if he filled its pages while still in Mordor, or after he left that place. Much else remains hidden to me. Some events here described. Some event is here described, but Vaughan obscured the identity of these involved. Can you make sense of it, Andang? Uncertain events, they look like orcs. I had no choice. Anyone would see that. I have not made any further progress in this direction, Andang. Not yet, anyway. Go back to the entrance of these halls of memory. There's another avenue to pursue. So I'm guessing we won't have, like, further answers till later. I feel like Lodra was like, hey, GTA's got light tunnels, right? We're making our own. Worry not, Andang. Progress, however, slow, remains progress. Spare me this look of disappointment, Andang. I have not been idle, and while that course of study has come to an early end, there is another avenue upon which I have uh, had some success. I told you that Vowen filled the Black Book with much talk of Thafor Gathol. Indeed, it seems to have been an obsession of his. The reading was slow, and for a time I paid it little mind, for I could not see how it might relate to the rest of his writings. But I am a wizard. I am Gandalf. I was seized with sudden inspiration, and knew there must be some element I missed. A kernel of useful information, buried within crispy chicken... <laughs> His constant talk of the four Garthol. And so there was. Vaughan's desire to find crispy chicken is not unusual for his kind. But in this, he is unusual. He speaks of seeking for the four Garthol in the company of a long beard king. I do not know if. Thrain is serious about this expedition. It matters not, so long as he supplies us with food and equipment. Tafor Gathol awaits. I can feel it. Onward, Andang. There is more to learn. Gandalf mutters to himself as he searches for the right page. Thirteen, no, not thirteen. Twenty-seven, yes, page twenty-seven. Here we are. 
Here's Glowy Tunnel and then Mordor. Here we go. Whoa. Go on adventures adventured in the Grey Mountains in search of Lost the Forgothol. Can we tell where we are? Not especially. <laughs> We're right here on a pay man, that is one of the coolest screens I've ever seen. Taking a picture of that. Alright, we don't want to get stuck. Let's go back. Why did King Thrine agree to lead an expedition in search of the Forgothol? His father, Nine, had been slain in Moria, along with many of his people, and the survivors gathered in the Grey Mountains. They dwelled for a time in the Steel Keep, and re reopened several of their mines. It was not enough. If he could make use of the Zaruka to find a more suitable home, with wealth to rival Lost Kazadun, he would do so. King Thrine's desire to find the Forgathol could not match that of the Zaruka with whom he allied. He gave up in the search after only a few years, and instead found founded Erebor beneath the Lonely Mountain. But Vowen remained, and his account has much to say about his fruitless search. So dang, they're tying in, tying in the founding of Erebor and everything else. Interesting. I say fruitless, but it was not truly so. Can you make sense of what he encountered? Do 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 do. Hold, strangers. Who goes there and for what purpose? It is a dwarf. I am called Magaldir. My boon companions and I mean you no harm. You are an elf. That is true. The mountains are no place for an elf. I think that is less true, Master Dwarf. We go where evil lurks, and oppose it. Do you know evil when you see it, then? Thus far, as well as any. There is evil in Gundabad, they say. It makes my own search difficult. It may be we could find a common purpose, Master Dwarf. Judging from how often Magaldir's name appears in the Black Book, Vowen had made a fast friend. Thoyer adventures beyond them. Uh, up and down the Grey Mountains, and then as far as Gundabad. But who was this elf? Does he appear anywhere but within the pages of the Black Book? He does. Here we go. Through the Mine Palace. Gandalf looks up from the Black Book of Mordor and strokes his beard. Oh, dang. Are we in Minas Morgul? Where are we? Outside of Bowen's book, the name Maldor appears only once.
Almost two thousand years before this encounter with Vowen in Arid Mithrin, an elf named Magaldir served beneath High King Gilgaland, or Gilgaland, if you follow the Tolkien Professor podcast and know what goes on there. During the siege of Baradur. Oh, this is Baradur, dang. Paul, welcome to the chat, nice to have you here. Paul says SSG wrecked the Mac client. We're so bummed. So the Mac client of 64 bit or the Mac client in general? I saw in the forums there were a lot of issues, so not sure which one. I totally lost my place. Now during the siege better. His name appears in the loss in the list of elves who maintained the fortifications of an encampment in Mordor called Akkad in Edhild. So this is that then. But that is all. If he performed any heroic deeds on behalf of the last alliance, they are not recorded. Gil Gil Gallad. Indeed, if it were not for the frequent mentions of his name in the Black Book, I should think he perished during the siege. But survived he did for two thousand years. Later, he encountered Vowen. My study of the Black Book of Mordor has only raised further questions. Yeah, no kidding. So we got this elf. So my guess is that we're going to have answers later. But for now, only questions. That is all I have learned so far. It will take some days to learn more, but I am confident Vowen and Magaldir will not keep their secrets from me for long. Geeky salad. I think Brandeth is losing it. It is clear that Kiel's thrice great grandfather Vowen has much yet to tell us. I will continue to study these pages, Andang. It is clear that Kiel's thrice great grandfather Vowen has much yet to tell us. If we can solve the mystery he has left behind. But I see we have a visitor. What do you want, newcomer? You have a message for Andang, and clearly can't keep speak at all, and are like Lassie. Then deliver it. Are you not aware that a wizard's time is valuable? Tarn's little black book. Who wrote this part? Steely Dan. Oh my. I did not mean to cause offense. <laughs> Branda says sticky tar. Yes. Yes, thank you, Branda. Uh, from the old lore master days. I don't remember if I even finished that deed or not. I don't think I did. I think I went through all last stream forgetting. Thank you, Branda. I did not mean to cause this is Gandalf speaking. Because this dwarf clearly can't speak for themselves. Alright, let me make sure we're still live on Twitch, because it looks like it might be having some issues. Yep, we're good to go. Alright, good deal. Good deal. Okay. I did not mean to cause offense. Everyone knows wizards are quick to anger. But I did not expect the wick to catch so swiftly. <laughs> uh. Paul says, Sauron, take your big black cow and get out of here. I have a message for you, Andeng, from a mutual friend. He asked me to send you to him on the road to the Glimmer Deep. 
with as much haste as you can manage. As fast as the wind, he said to me. Well, uh, now I have delivered the message and I want to take my leave. And more importantly, I will leave the wizard to his books and in peace. Hello, who is this? It's Gandalf speaking. Hello, who is this? Quit texting lol. Just laugh already. Always posting lol instead of actually laughing. A wizard would never write lol. We actually laugh with merriment. Like a Khajiit. From ESO. I poop in the sand. That's what Khajiits do. Alright. Let's see. Paul says, sorry man, I'll stop at the 70s pop culture references. Uh, you're sounding like Minsk from Baldur's Gate. Alright. I'll take all those. That that sounds good. Meanwhile, back at the Hall of Justice, Batman and Robin begin. All right. <laughs> the messenger is somewhere elsewhere. Yes. Very good. I'm wondering how many chapters are in this book, because they did say after this we'd be going to the next area. Curiosity killed the cat. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Hey, there's some goblins. Da -da 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 -da. Orcs! Orc on a fork. Bit of a dork from York with pork. He cried, that's orc on my fork. Oh my, if you haven't seen that, absolutely check out Locher Players. My favorite moments was when we got that poem from Sue. I was told Karskar was slain, but I did not believe it. I do not. I did not follow her into the anvil ending, as you and Durin requested. And when the expedition returned with word that Karazgar had been slain by the Herald of Winter, my friends told me I was avenged. But I knew it was not so. I don't know why we're voicing him like that. I knew in my bones that Karazgar still lived. But none of the scouts have seen any sign of him. Since the expedition returned. Stalin, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Hales of Anduin, part one. Two hours later, still in Grey Mountains, right? We know he is a master of stealth, but did he not prove his ability to move silently when he first ambushed me, cutting my leg with his cool blade? and robbing me of my feet flatness. If he does not wish to be found, even the most alert of our scouts will not find him. I stood nearby and listened as Horan gave his report to Enoch, who succeeded Botos Frostbold as leader of my people here at Skarhold. And I think they missed something important. Karazgar had controlled over much of the Frost Horde, yes. But did you did he not use its drakes and worms to attack us here? But that power derived from his mastery over Vaithong Wintermind. According to Horin's account, Karazgar began to lose control over Vaithong as the Horde turned against him. And when Vaithong perished, the Drake died, cursing his former master. 
What if Karazgar's control over the Frost Horde perished with Vaithon? Instead of scouting from on high for Karazgar, I insist. I instead watched for strange behavior on the part of Frost Drakes in the mountains. And behold, I saw many of the creatures moving with single minded purpose. Not on behalf of Karazgar, no. I think they are seeking for him, wounded as he is, for the same purpose as I. I think the Drakes seek him for vengeance, Anding. If we follow their tracks, they may lead us right to Karazgar. I saw them south of here. Hurry, there. Hurry, there. Hurry there, and I will follow behind and catch up as I can. That is a really cool, I don't even know, I guess staff, that's cool. A Lord Master Dwarf. Thank you, Lord Master Dwarf. It's been here the entire time. Cool. Frost Drakes pass this way in great numbers. Heading south. How you know this, the world may never know. Right. Go away, Gundabad Sentry. Back to Gundabad with you. From whence you came. Whatever comes through those troll doors. A partially hidden path leads among the rocks to the northwest. The tracks have led us here. We should climb this path and see where it goes. This is where the tracks have led us, Anding. Karazgar may be stealthy enough to hide from Longbeard and Zauruka scouts, but it seems he has found it more difficult to escape the sight of the Frost Horde. Many drakes and worms came this way, and if I am right, they may seek to avenge the death of Vaithong Wintermind. We should climb this path and see where it goes, but remain alert. If I am right, we may find Karazgar at the end of it, and perhaps at the end, at his end as well. Let me double check Twitch again real here, real here, real quick here. Let me double check Twitch again real here. Yeah, it's going fine. Good deal. It just, for some reason, has issues connecting certain things. Anyway, interesting. Okay. Well, let's continue along. Back up this way. How do we get up there? You must fly. Fly, you fools. Just like the Balrog. Here we go. Turns out it's real simple. You just follow the path. No, you must fly. As an Asgore flies. And let us hope we don't meet one of those. All right. Enough quoting movies. Let's move along. Move along. We got mail. We haven't checked it yet. We need to. Uh, climb the steep hidden path you discovered. The steep path climbs northeast to a shadowy cave entrance. Um. Um. Oh my goodness, that is a very steep path. Jeez. And inside we find Shelob at her other lair. All right, let me double check Twitch again real quick here, just to make sure. At her other lair. All right, let me yeah, double we're check going Twitch fine. again. I don't know why it uh, is reacting that way. Anyway, not important. Let's continue along. All 
All right, if you're watching on Twitch, post in the chat just to make sure it's going through properly. This must be Karsgar's lair, from where he launched his attack on Skarhol. Seems okay, watching it, cool. Awesome. I think we found the Tandang. This much be Kar... This must... This much be Karsgar's lair. This must be Karsgar's lair, for where he launched his attack on Skarhol. Can you smell it? The stealth of evil is all over this cavern. Her summer lair. <laughs> oh, yes, her summer lair. She goes to the, the icy places, right? Man, I would love to see ice spiders. That, that is something Lotro really hasn't done. Ice spiders? That would be cool. Or oh, terrifying, one of the two. Alright. Good deal, good deal. We need to learn what happened here. You hear two endings, which one is real? <laughs> the one you hear first, of course. Alright, um. Da -da 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 What's funny is the second one's gonna say that at a delay. Let's see here. I feel like this is obvious, but yeah, it's really obvious because it has finesse. Alright, we're going to equip it in the second slot. Do we never equip this ring? Oh no, we replaced it. Okay, so that's wearing this bracelet. I know how to quest. Alright. 29,000 armor? Getting a little ridiculous. Hey, critical rating, that's way better all around. Alright, um. Equip that to that. Do we want to? Probably not. What about this? Block rating? Eh. Eh. Um, do we have any saved in the other one? Oh, here we go. Might. Parry rating? Jelly. Let's put some might on there. There we go. And then here we're wanting to drag that into the other. Well, that was rude. It closed. The... It's like you don't want this other window either, do you? <laughs> of course not. Oh, that's the wrong spot. There we go. I know how to do armor. Don't laugh at me, chat room. Don't you dare. <laughs> armor levels approach D and D territory, right? Right. I read your title as Cameraman of Gondor. That's what it is. Cameraman of Gondor. Because I'm from Gondor and I'm a cameraman, so I was able to do Cameraman of... Anyway. <clears throat> we need to learn what happened here. Go forward with caution, Anding. And I will follow behind. Worms of the Frost Horde or Karasgar himself may lie in wait for us further ahead. I think we have cornered the weeping warrior in his lair, and a cornered animal is made more dangerous. Remain alert for any threat, no matter what it might be. Why we're doing this with just two dwarves, I don't know. Oh, not more of the burning drake thing. Here we go, we're gonna lose all our eyebrows. All right, thankfully we're just examining. Judging from its injuries, this drake engaged in fierce fighting, fierce battle before it was slain. These drakes of the Frost Horde were slain by some sharp instrument. Perhaps the bagpipe. Small piles of rust shine in the pale light of the cavern. Whoa, that's cool. This is really cool. 10 out of 10 would quest again. Oh, 
The Fortress of Solitude. But yeah, we do have the title and Deng Cameron of Gondor, and we're part of the Knights Who Say Deng, which was the uh, kinship that we made, which never really went anywhere, but we still made it. Alright, um, what are we looking for? Some sign of Karsgar. I thought we already found that. Go back, you missed something on the ground. Ah, uh, yes, a pool of blood. Oh, dang. Godsex22, welcome to the chat. Steam still rises from the blood, even in the cavern's cold air. Steam rises? What do you... The tunnel opens into a large cavern filled with corpses of worms and drakes. Yeah, I already saw that. That's dead drake. The drake corpse is warm to the touch. The creature has not been dead for long. Oh, dang. This is quite the place. Uh, I can't click on you. Why can't I click on you? Here we go. <laughs> have to talk from behind. They have not lost their touch with the visual grammar. Ultra's art direction is always top notch, no matter how the old game, how old the game is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you've not yet uh, subscribed on YouTube or followed on Twitch, feel free to do so. It's free. Or if you're on Mixer as well. Although I don't think we've had anybody on Mixer all night, but that's fine. All right, let's talk. I don't understand. Where is Karasgar? It is clear from the butchery here that he engaged in battle with the Frost Horde that tracked him to the Slayer. But if he was the victor, as he seems to have been. Then where has he gone? Where has Karaskar gone? I need to think. I need to think. Let me think very, very hard. I'm a dwarf. I'm a dwarf and I'm thinking hard. I <laughs> Don't ask me why I did that. Um, <laughs> let's continue along. Note that you will automatically travel to Skarhold when you accept this quest. I need to think. When Vaithung died, Karasgar's control over much of the Frost Horde died with him. His last chance to regain that control was to dominate the Herald of Winter. But she proved far too powerful for his tricks. Grievously wounded and bleeding, he cast aside his blade, and fled from Winter Stith. At Hirmil's command, and fueled by hate, the rakes of the Frost Horde followed Karasgar back to his lair, where he remained himself, and fought for his life. Did he win this engagement? He must have survived, for his body does not lie among the corpses of his foes. Where could he have gone? What would he still wish to do? When a dwarf thinks hard, <laughs> can you smell oil smoke? He cannot have returned to Skarhold, can he? Is his hatred for us such that he would seek to destroy my people rather than rest and recover from his injuries? We cannot stay here, Andeng. We must return to Skarhal at once. Alright. Time to travel. I believe it's uh same guy for twelve years still writing the epic. Always good story he does in Lotro. Yeah, Maid of Lions has been writing it this whole time as far as I know. And it's still amazing. Wait a moment. 
Wait a moment. This was the exit of the escape tunnel that Zelruka discovered in the rear of the Scarled Keep. But I thought it was collapsed. Why then has the rubble been removed? The cave mouth cleared. I do not like this ending. Who opened this passage again? And for what purpose? We must brave the tunnel. We have no choice. Oh, here we go, everybody. Let's get some hype this in the chat the for this. Doing. We have to hurry. Oh my goodness, we do what? Dwarf's dead. A Zelruka warrior lies face down in the tunnel. He's dead. He wasn't just lying there for no reason. Oh man. This is going to be crazy. If he took on all those drakes, this is going to be a cakewalk. No offense to dwarves, but I feel like it is. Alright. It was God is God. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done like a blood choking like that. That was kind of dark. All right, we're fighting you, bat. Here we go. We defeated the bat with our high DPS. Like a champion. There we go. All right. Feed the cave claw. Da, 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 da. Whoa. Army of cave claws. Cars God now controls an army of cave claws. He went to the cave claw leader. To prevent players from getting legendary weapons. He buffed up the cave claws. Leveled them to 120. By running wog pins many, many times, super quickly. Come on. Go away, frenzied bat. Okay. Mind the gap. I guess there really. Oh, there's another dead dwarf. I guess there's really only one way through here, huh? Well, maybe. Let's follow the dead bodies. Drake's too hard to control, so cave claws were easier, right? Right. Oh, dang. I knew that was gonna happen. Oh my gosh. Well, now we can get a more unobscured screenshot. See? Good to things happen to those who wait. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, this is awful. All right, let's talk, buddy. God is God is wounded, but still he overmatched us. He left the keep. Gamad Breeze is last. Oh my gosh. Just a trail of bodies. Good grief. God is God did this, all this on his own. Dang. Is that? I'm just gonna explore real quick here. Huh. I don't know. Let's go back. Man, that is crazy. All right, let's continue along. I knew the story was gonna get epic in this update, but I had no idea. Ending. I've been looking everywhere for you. Follow me. Durin is in danger. We 
We need to find some kings for you. That's a weed. You should find it right now. Oh, dang. No more, Kalisgar! You do not have the means to stop me, dwarf. Look around you. I do not need the Frost Horde to fulfill my promise. What is going on here? Gandalf! Go back inside, old man. My business here is with dwarfs. Do not be fooled by appearances, Karazgar. And my business is with all of Middle-earth. I am not afraid of wizards. Your body will bleed like all of the others. Your master is gone. Sauron I might have feared, but you are not Sauron. You are one servant of the Dark Lord. One servant only. <laughs> I am greater than Sauron. What weapons do you think to wield against me? That staff. That book. That book is from Mordor. Give it to me. You will get nothing from us, Karazgar, save death. I demand you give me that book at once. You came to this place with demands, Karazgar, and with promises. Well, I too made a promise. I promise to defend Middle-earth against Sauron and all his servants. And now, I will keep that promise. Give me that book and I will go, wizard. I will never return. I will abandon my claim to this land. Just give me that book. Longbeards, Zoruka, attack. He flees, but his mask remains. Touch it not, Durin. Oh, dang. And dang, bring the mask of Karazgar to me. Yes, I have no problem with you touching it. Ha 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 ha. Just go ahead and die, ending. The mask is cold to the touch. This mask is a relic of power, an artifact of great evil. It is not safe for any others to hold it for long. In my care, however, it will be safe. Karazgar has been defeated for now. We must discuss what must be done next, for he has revealed to us something most peculiar. He desires to possess the Black Book of Mordor. Epic helm drop, right? I wish we could have looted it. Not just cold, it's cold to the touch. Uh, Karisgar has been shamed, but that does not remove the danger he poses. To the dwarves of the Arid Mithrin. So great was his desire to possess that black book that he thought to release his claim upon this land in order to get it 
Nothing I have deciphered to this point explains this yearning for Vowen's tome. But I have seen enough of this Gerzil to know we should hinder his plots wherever we can. Karasgar may be a master of deception, but I think his desire for the Black Book of Mordor was truthful. Does he believe it could hold the secret to maintaining his power, or his life's essence? Could it be possible that the book record records his birth name, his Bugdatish, or Bugdash? If that is so, surely he will seek it unceasingly. Despite Kavazgar's defeat, he will one day return and try to seize it. The book cannot stay here at Scarhold. Man, Yoda tells us books aren't important, and Gandalf's like, This book is important. Keep it in protection, Undang. Books are important. Remember that. All right, might, fate, and vitality. Da 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 and physical mastery. I propose a new journey. We must bring the black book away from Scarhold. Ah, so that's what takes us to the Vales of Anduin. Okay, how do we get there anyway? Da 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 da. There we go. Um, from Lothlorien, Ered Laskalin. Here we go. So. Mountains of Mirkwood, Fields of Kelden. So we gotta go down that way. What? No, that's not the right way. Um, how do we get there? Arid Mithrin. It's gotta be that way, right? Oh, there we go, to the Vales of Anduin. Way over there. Huh. I don't know how we're gonna get over there. I propose that we travel together for once, Andeng. Even though I previously said you slow me down, this time I'm not in a hurry. Anyway, bring the Black Book with us on a new journey away from the Stones of Scarhold. So we're now, I think for the first time in the entire story, going on an adventure with Gandalf and just us. That's really cool. But where should we take it? I suggest the new zone. It probably hasn't leveled up for it yet. Anyway, a place of both comfort and strength. Perhaps a lodge, warmed by a roaring heath, and guarded by a family of stern temperament. But who deal kindly with their friends? Yes, I speak of Grimbjorn and his folk, Handing. The Bjorning Huss will be well suited for my study of the Black Book, and we shall be assuredly safe within its wooden walls. Grimbjorn will require some convincing before he allows us to stay, but like his father, Beorn before him, if we speak his curiosity, he if we spark his curiosity rather, <laughs> he will open his doors to us. Aldemiris, welcome to the chat, nice to have you here. Gorst Frump, welcome to the chat, nice to have you here. Where were we? Da -da 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 -da. The direct road south is not open to us, but that is no great hindrance. Let us return to Ered Laskalin on our way to the Bjorning lands, for I wish to consult with Tharandul of the wood. <laughs> that cat came out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Now, <laughs> I keep losing our, our spot here. 
Let us return to Aaron Laskalin on our way to the Beorning Lands. I wish to consult with Thranduil of the wooded of the wood about several small matters. If he has not already done so, we should ask him to open the forest gate at once. Almir says you'll get a quest to go to the forest gate for five mithril coins. Uh Brandeth uh, Endang should be a Lotro NPC voice actor. Thank you. Uh, we'll be safe within the walls. Something I never thought would be possible. Apparently a farm is safer than a giant city. Hey, that's always true. You gotta get off the grid when you're running from people. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. This isn't one of the cases where you want to take the Black Book to Mordor. To destroy it. The Black Book must be destroyed. No, 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 no. This isn't like that at all, apparently. Because there's knowledge in that book that we need. Sure, it could make Karsgar infinitely powerful, but we might learn something, Andang. And learning is something wizards care about. There was nothing to learn from the One Ring. Just useless power that was going to hurt us all. Lydiaeth, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Got that on one of your cares? Alright, cool. Good deal. You should bid farewell to Durin before we leave for Felagoth. An ending. Tell the young prince to ignore the voice in his heart that compels him to seek the four Gathol. Now that I told him no, he'll probably do it anyway. That place is lost. If ever it existed at all, and he should put it far from his mind. It is not for him. Knowledge. Order. Power. Love that Sauron trailer that they made. The Rohirrim know not what awaits them. In Isengard. I'm a crazy old man that lives in a tower. Good for you, Saruman. All right, let's talk to Durin. I am sorry to see you go, but I understand Gandalf's reasoning. To keep such an artifact here as the Black Book of Mordor must be considered unwise. Undoubtedly so. And doubly so, if it is sought by one such as Karazgar. The Weeping Warrior has been shamed by our wizard, True. But such a humbling is bound to last only a short while. He will recover from it, if he still desires to get his claws on the Black Book. As it seems he must, he will follow its trail away from here. Take care on your journey, my friend, and beware, for heffalumps and woozles live up there. You bid Durin a warm well farewell. But before you depart his company, you give him Gandalf's warning not to seek for Thafor Gathol. Durin looks at you thoughtfully and hefts the red axe in one hand. Ah, you do not need worry on that score, my friend. There is so much to be done here at Skarhald without adding Thafor Gathol to our list of problems. Longbeard, Zauruka, and Stout Axes must all work to steady our foothold in the Grey Mountains, and to launch such an expedition so soon would be folly. Perhaps one day, Andang, perhaps one day, but certainly not today. Durin's words are reassuring, but after taking your leave, you turn back and see him gazing at the distant peaks of the Arid Mithrin, and wonder. Oh man, man, that is a cool cloak. Good job on that outfit, buddy. All right. Stan says, "Where are they taking the hobbits? I forget." Two eyes in God. Two eyes in God. 
All right. God, 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 God. Um, bum 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 bum. To the glimmer deep, to storm wall, to steel keep, to the withered heath. All of which we don't need. Talk to Legolas at the forest gate in Ered Laskalin. Uh, complete the Black Book of Mordor, Chapter Ten One: A New Journey. Talk to King Thranduil at his throne in Felagoth. Okay, good deal. Let's go do that so we can finally enter this new zone. This has been a long preamble. My goodness. Of course, the only way to go. Da 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 da. Oh yeah, we gotta get mail too before we forget. They're taking the hobbits to eyes and God. To eyes and God. To eyes and God. The hobbits, the hobbits, the hobbits. Alright. Enough of that. <laughs> Brandeth is going full song there. Alright. Good deal. Eh! <laughs> We're still falling, I feel like. Oh no, we better not be stuck. We've worked this character too long. We made it to level 120. We're not going to get stuck. Oh yeah, that reminds me. Um, as we get stuck. Uh, there's now the new trade point thing, right? Yeah, here we go. What do we got here? So let's see, we got determination. How many levels are there anyway? Out of 60, okay. Wit. Finesse. Critical rating, physical mastery. Oh my gosh, we gotta get wit! What can we give up for wit? Let's see, we got agility, physical mastery... A lot of physical mastery, way more than that. But in theory, this wit would be way better if we got it leveled up. Agility, da, da, da. Uh, in combat morale regen, maximum morale, tactical mitigation, plus extra mass morale, extra max morale, vitality, armor, physical mastery. There we go. There's finesse and physical mastery. Good deal. Yeah, this is the 64 uh, bit client. Yep. And this is update 24 of Lotro. And this is the new virtue traits that they have, which I'm figuring out live here on the stream. Um, so basically you can level these up now. That's what these blue bars are, I'm guessing. 108 virtue XP needed to next rank. What's this other bar? I guess that's how far along you are. 45 of 60 possible ranks. Okay, yeah, so that's how many ranks you are and that's how far you are. So we've almost got determination all the way up. Good deal. All right. See, stuff like that. That doesn't happen. I feel like that's the glow thing. Let's check. Advanced graphics. Uh, da, 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 da. Glow mapping. No, it's not glow mapping. Bloom filter? Nope. Volumetric sunlight? Nope. Is processing? Nope. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. But as you can see, we got everything on Ultra. That can be on Ultra anyway. Alright, well I guess we're not gonna figure out why that does that. We're just gonna continue along. What do you need? Let's go to South Bree. Cause why not? Off topic, have you seen uh that the La Ryan is making a new Baldur's Gate game? No, I had no idea. That's cool. Alright, let's see. Da, 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 da. We could go straight to the veils. Uh, da, 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 da. So I think it's in this one. Yeah, Dale, Erebor. Let's go to Erebor. 
That'll get us in the region at least. Here we go. Okay, so now we have to go obviously way further to Felagoth. Which means Pretty we get. My biggest fear. You know, it's always back to an elf. We always have to go back to an elf. It never fails. It never fails. Amazing how that always happens. Hold on a moment, Jandang. We must go back and talk with the elf. You know, the elf. No, not that elf. The elf, Jandang. Let me take a quick look at analytics while we're doing this real quick. All right, no interesting stats so far. Okay, back to it. Da 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 So I forget, how do you get audio to still work while you're not in the window? There's a setting for that, isn't there? Or is it just an issue with the 64-bit client? Let me know, chat. Oh yeah, we can ride goats in here. Shut the goat, we shall go! Things I never thought I'd say in my life. Tell the goat, we shall go! Oh, we forgot to check for mail. We're, we gotta do that. Got to. Well, luckily, there's a mail thing in here. You can ride your horse too. Yeah, but, you know, dwarves. This is still in the dwarf mind, right? Elves run Middle-earth? Yeah, they think they do. But really, they're just trying to get out, right? Uh, glad that you're his assistant, so the video links to help uh, set up both Twitch and YouTube at the same time. Happy gaming. Yeah, thank you so much, Wolfrun. Really appreciate it. It's, it's caps lock. Yeah, thank you so much. Donations. All right, send. Okay, let's go talk to the elf that we don't really need to talk to, but we're going to anyway. I thought, I thought those crystals were getting off for a second. What's this? 115 junk? No, thank you. What about the other one? More 115 junk. Alright. You have returned to my halls. Did your yeah. search come to naught? You have returned to my halls, and Zandeng, as has Mithrandir. Am I to understand your search for the Bugdatish, the artifact sought by Agrukor and Karazgar of the Gerzil, has come to naught? You briefly recount your adventures with the dwarves and your several confrontations with Garazgar. Thranduil smiles grimly. It is often thus, he replies, that servants of the enemy outreach themselves, and their fall is all the further for it. I applaud Mithrandir for remaining Kar reminding Karazgar that not every power in this world has fallen of evil. As for the forest gate, I have already sent wood elves to open it. Trade has not yet been continued, but that too should soon follow. I will speak with Mithrandir for a time, and then the two of you should continue on to the forest gate. 
on the western bounds of Erinnaskalin. You will find it unsealed, your path to the Beyonding Lands open. All right, time to talk to Legolas. Here we go. To Legolas we should go. To Legolas we should go. Da 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 da. To Legolas we should go. All right. Um. Back the way we came. Yes, because that's so much fun. Can we port out to the? Uh, da 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 da. Aaron Mithrin. Hmm. Yeah, that's over in the other zone. All right. We're taking Endang to see the Elf King. The Elf King, the Elf King. We're taking Endang to see the Elf King. King, 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 King. Oh my. We're taking, we're taking, we're taking. Good deal. All right. Let's find this stable. Negavonen. Where can we go? There. Thram Teradol. <laughs> Alright. Here we go. Sometimes I just go a little country. Don't know why. Alrighty. We can be on a real mount. Whoa, getting a little adventurous there. All right, let's try to make it somewhat safely down. On our steed of war. Still broke a leg, somehow. Somehow still managed. All right, well, since we already broke one... It's a short ride from there. Yep, that's the goal. Probably not the way we should go. Never get off the path, right? Oh, we have done that. Oh, man. Luckily, it's just boars in here. Hey, there's the path. That was a very delayed broken leg sound effect. My goodness. Here we go, to the forest gate. Short ride being a relative turn. <laughs> so dark they could really see nothing. Yeah, I bet. During night this would be ridiculous. This is daytime. This is just the middle of the afternoon. It's dark in here. They don't even have a light, probably. Not that you'd really want one. Stuff jumping out at you and stuff. I sees you. But yeah, I feel like they really did a great job with this part of Mirkwood. Kind of made up for what players thought of the other Mirkwood. But in theory, you know, Sauron would have been cutting down trees and stuff, so it makes sense that that one's not as not as full. <laughs> There's a lore master here. Well, this is cool. Get this page. To Casa Doom we retreated then, but at last the Waken Dragons came and found us there. 
With the aid of elves and men, we bested them. Though the cost was great. And for a time, we knew peace. How do you enable 64-bit? You go, uh, you hit on the client, but there's like a drop-down arrow. You go to options, and then in options, there's an option to change it to the 64-bit client. The forest gate is open, and our Inside path the to the Bayorning lands is clear. The forest gate is open, Anding, and our path to the Bayorning lands is clear. That is good. Pretty self-explanatory, really, but I just wanted to say it. Don't hear it often enough from wizards. Anyway, if we do not tarry with conversations like we just had, we should reach the Beyonding Lands today. The Vales of Anduin are home to a number of hearty folk, Andang. The woodsmen, the woodmen make their homes on the edge of the forest. You will find them rustic and superstitious, but do not mistake either of these qualities for weakness. To dwell within the shadow of Mirkwood for so long has made them strong. And while the wood now has a fairer name, the woodsman endured when it did not. Sir Streamer, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Grimbeorn's folk, the Beornings, have also weathered hardship in the Vales. Long ago, they learned the secret art of skin changing and other denizens of the vales hunted them nearly to extinction but they survived and now they are a sturdy folk slow to trust outsiders but were the allies of those they name friend let us go to the beyond beyond ingus southwest of here and see if grim beyond will count us among that lucky number. Of course, I already know that answer from the Hobbit days, but anyway, we'll just assume that I don't. Oh, we just got two more pages? Man. Stuff we need to do in-game. Alright. And we got four there. Okay. Let's see, where are we? Uh, da -da -da, there we go. And then introduction, which would probably be this one. There we go. All right, let's talk, Prince of Mirkwood. It is good to see you again. So cool to see all this stuff I haven't got to yet. Hopefully they will they'll take pity on us Mac users. Yeah, seriously, like they need to fix that soon. Soon. And Dang, it is good to see you again. My father has sent me to the Vales of Anduin to resolve a trade dispute. When King Thranduil declared no one leave or enter Erin Laskalin, trade between the elves and the Beornings was halted. Now he wishes to resume trade, for elves, men, and dwarves all rely upon us. The security of the north depends on Beornings and their willingness to trade. If you and Gandalf have headed if you and Gandalf are headed to see Grimbeorn, perhaps you would speak to him of the reopening of trade between the Beornings and the Elves. If there is one fact that I know of Grimbeorn, it is that he does not welcome guests. If we were to all greet him together, the task I was sent to do would surely fail. Beornings are the bane of Andang? Oh, man. I don't know about that. New Deed, a chronicle of the company. Alright, so we're up here. I think we're just going to here. The Flood Fells. Interesting. And then Lothlorien down there. So this connects from, what, here, basically? Through here, down, all the way through Gladden Fields to Lothlorien. You'll join my Discord? Cool. Good deal. Let me 
make sure I'm not missing out on a few things here real quick. And then we'll continue along. Good deal, good deal. All right. Now we ride. I'm sure there's pages or something hidden around here somewhere. Whoa. Gotta take on these flies. They got a quest over their head. We gotta do it. Man, this is like beautiful. This reminds me a lot of Gondor and Rohan like combined together. Swarming gnats and pesky flies in the Bjorning lands are hard to bear. Ah. Even for a Bjorning. Ah. You should defeat these annoying insects. Those in the Bjorning lands will be pleased with your efforts. Pesky bugs. Nadarin, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Catwoman, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. It says it connects to the Misty Mountains too. Good deal, good deal. Yeah, I did see that. So our part of the Misty Mountains that we went to, yeah, I guess it is that far south, huh? Huh. Oh yeah. Good deal, good deal. All right, well, we'll get to those flies later. Let's make our way towards the Bjorning camp. Do all that. Deed bestowed. Whoa, that was an eagle. It's a baby eagle. Oh, no, that's a goose. Never mind. <laughs> it looked like an eagle from the portrait. All right. Uh, that's a rock. Oh, man, this is bad. <laughs> All right. Let's continue on down. Hitting insects lose interest or not that easy to <laughs> slip. Protectors of the veils. All right. The horses have gone to tell Bjorn of the arrival of strangers, said Gandalf. The sound of buzzing bees and sweet smell of clover welcome you to the Bjorn Ingus. And we are having lag all of a sudden. Just too many players here, I feel like. We found Lag City. Population players. The veils must be made safe. The veils what must. You can. He's like freaking out. Calm down, buddy. Like I know you got the long sideburns and everything, but just just take a break. It's cool. <laughs> I realize there's a point to a Bjorning stable master, but on some level that's funny, right? Having a guy that can turn into a bear, presumably, taking care of horses. Just saying, on some level that's kind of funny. Because it's literally just for outsiders, they don't need it. They can be bears. Grimbjorn. Looks very grim. He lives up to his name. Well now, there is, there are 15 of you. Perhaps we can finish this without any more interruptions, okay. All right, let's talk. You say this is Gandalf? <laughs> this does not look like the Gandalf I know. <laughs> yeah, about that. Do you expect me to welcome you to my home ending? These, are, these days are dire enough without wizards and the traveling companions darkening my doorstep. Why should I make room for the two of you? And whatever trouble likely follows behind. You say this is Gandalf? Tell me no such lies. I have met Gandalf, and this cannot be he. Gandalf is a man old and bent, dressed in grey. Kind of temperament is he, and not like this imperious stranger. Gandalf? <laughs> If this truly is Gandalf, 
I say that trouble follows him wherever he goes. And these days are dire enough already, without such as he darkening my doorstep. I will take care of my own kind first. If you will stay at my home, you will have the poorest rooms and the smallest servings at dinner. And in all other things you will become second and last. Is this understood? Be glad I do not turn you away, as is my right. But I am feeling generous. This lodging is not without cost. Grimbjorn is grim. I will allow you to stay for now, for I know the dangers that lie beyond my walls, and I am not, and I will not make you face them alone. But I do not give you this lodging for free. It will cost you nothing in coin, rather. The price will be the sweat of your brow. Many are the tasks that need doing, and in return for a safe place to stay, you will see them done. Do you agree? Very good. <laughs> Free labor's hard to come by. The road through my lands has become choked in some places with brush. Clear four patches of brush, and you will have made a start on opening the way. We always have need of flint and firewood. Gather four suitable logs and search patches of soil until you find three pieces of flint. Orcs and wargs have been troubling my family ever since blah 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 blah. I don't even care about this and I'm the NPC. Slay four orcs and three wargs. And let them know that these lands are not safe for them. That will be a start ending. That is my price. Speak to Gandalf and learn if he appreciates this favor. My decision still stands. Absolutely not. My decision has nothing to do with the King of the Green Leaves and everything to do with my people. However, I permit you to stay for as long as you need. I am not unkind. The darkness has spread across the mountains. Back to the Eckad Kanda left days, right? Clear the brush from the trail. The darkness has spread across the mountains into the formerly peaceful valleys. And these lands of mine are no exception. Orcs and wogs spy wogs? Orcs and wogs spy on my people from among the trees. Goblins creep from the holes in greater numbers than ever before. Even the beasts of the wood are angered, not just by strangers, but by me, once their trusted friend and companion. Speak to my kin in the vales, and every one of my people will confirm I speak the truth, and that it needs addressing. Once you have spoken to them, journey north to the edge of the flood fells, and find signs of the danger that creeps ever near to my home. Some days ago, I sent Harskor to the wood's edge with a wagon of provisions, but he has not returned. Have the wizards told you much of the woodmen, Endang? Before you came to the Vales, the settlement of Hultavis was beset by wogs and goblins come down from the mountains. Its fences were splintered, and its houses were singed with goblin fire. But Hultavis endured. Alas, it proved a costly victory. Many hailmen and a few of my kin were slain by the goblins. And now the chieftain of the woodmen, Rikmar, fears that he must face this tragedy on his own. He will not, and I have promised him my aid. My kin have served as guardians of the woodsmen for many years. And it is time of a great need for Rikmar's people. With many of his hunters slain, his people grow hungry. Worse still, he lacks the men to defend his people, should the defenses of Holtvis fall, 
to goblins. Some days ago I sent one of my kin, Hrothskor, to the wood's edge, with a wagon of provisions. But he has not returned, and is needed among us. I can spare no others for this task, and you have proven yourself trustworthy in my eyes. Deliver my message to Hrothskor, and aid Rikmar and his people as best you can. Perhaps he has remained in Hultvis for reasons of his own, but it is time he returned home. Grimbiorn is very grim. It is a bright day in the Vales. Look around you, and tell me what you see, stranger. You see peace, and you see safety. It is not easily won, and even less easily kept. My husband, Grimbeorn, fought many battles to make, to make it so, and he has shown no sign of stopping any day soon. Let the darkness beware. I am Goethe, matron of the Beorningas. My husband and our kin will fight to protect this way of our life from each danger that threatens. If you search for dangers, you will find them nearby. We live off the land, as we always have. The land. Listen to the buzzing of the bees. Watch as they trundle about. Those big bees belong to Beorn. Grim Beorn. But in name only, for they are the descendants of bees raised by his sire Beorn. And they are caused, they are cared for by us all. In return, they give us beeswax for candles, among other wares. Would you like to attend to the bees? They are partial to a strain of lavender that grows nearby. Okay, big breakfast for bees. Let's go inside this place, see if it's changed. Or did we ever even enter? I don't think we did. Hold the phone, Grimbeorn's Lodge. That is awesome. Bjorn in his deep rolling voice told tales of... What? Of wild lands and of dark and dangerous wood. There's a door. Whoa, lag, lag, lag. Good grief. Talk to Gandalf at the place. Hey, Gandalf. Want to talk? No, he doesn't. Gandalf doesn't want to talk. Why not? And I figured that was just a back door. Back inside. Hello? Gandalf. Earth to Gandalf. Gandalf wishes to speak to you. The wizard stands near the entrance. So we are in guess. Alright, so we got ahead of ourselves, I guess. Yep, there's the Gandalf we're supposed to talk to. Hey, Gandalf. Grimbiorn does not appreciate surprises. Grimbiorn has let us off lightly, Anding. Four patches of brush and logs for firewood, three pieces of flint, and this is not to mention the part, partly numbered of orcs and wogs he asked that you slay in the fields and meads around his home. Grimbeorn, like his sire before him, does not appreciate surprises. Oh, he will warm up to them in time, but at the onset, he looks upon any unexperienced arri unexpected arrival with disapproval. You'll need to trust me, Andang. If Grimbiorn asks that you clear four patches of brush, you should instead clear eight. If he asks for three pieces of flint, I suggest that you bring him six. In point of fact, I think you should double the quantities of each task that he set before you. 
He's a doppelganger. Yeah, clearly one of the... That's not Gandalf. Well, no, yeah, it turns out it's really not Gandalf. <laughs> Why? Let us just say that it is important for us to be on the good side of the Bjorningas master. You will thank me for it when all is said and done. Okay. Good deal, good deal. All right. Well, I think that this is good a place as any to stop the stream tonight. Thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode and you're on YouTube, be sure to leave a like. If you're on Twitch, head over to YouTube and leave a like. Um, if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Uh, it's free. Uh, just lets you know when we go live and things like that. Helps you see when new videos come out. That way you can follow us along this journey through this whole area. Mary Rose, welcome to the chat. Nice to have you here. Thank you so much for the follow earlier this week. And uh, yeah, good deal. Saruman returns, right? Right, Paul? Absolutely. Um, and likewise, if you're on uh, YouTube, feel free to follow over on Twitch so we can build that follow number. Uh, right now, I think we're only at 186 last I checked. So we're trying to shoot for 200. Get 200 followers on Twitch would be a big deal. So if you haven't yet, go over to Twitch. Uh, .tv slash andang underscore lp and uh, check out what's going on there. So anyway, thank you everyone so much for watching. When we return, which should be tomorrow, plan to stream again tomorrow, uh, probably a little bit earlier in the day, but we'll see how things go. Um, maybe do an afternoon stream, we'll see. Um, but anyway, be on the lookout for that. And yeah, we'll quest all throughout this area and probably make our way on further down towards the Gladden Fields, which I am super excited about. Cannot wait to go down there. And just very excited in general about the Vales of Anduin here. Good deal, good deal. All right, and go to see Roscabel, the Woods Edge, all of it. I'm excited about all of it. Okay. So anyway, thank you everyone so much for watching. And I'll see you again tomorrow for more Lotro uh, Veils of the Anduin. But till then, thank you everyone so much for watching. And have a great night.